After the Nintendo Switch launched and did some serious numbers, I expected Xbox and PlayStation to follow suit and ship handhelds. We've seen them copy and paste things that N Nintendo has done in the past with motion controls, for example, although that didn't work out nearly as well for them as it did for Nintendo. And maybe that's the reason why they decided to let Nintendo have the handheld market and they would focus on more powerful systems for your TV. But then Valve shipped the Steam Deck it was more powerful than the Switch. It could play games that the N Nintendo Switch couldn't come anywhere close to, and it also start started with an absolutely massive library. It is still a niche device, but I do think that there's a non-trivial number of consumers that are deciding to move towards the PC thanks to devices like the Steam Deck, and this has gotten the attention of Sony and Microsoft, both of which have recently taken baby steps towards shipping their own handheld. So in today's video, I wanna talk about how Valve paved the way for both Sony and Microsoft, as well as others, and how the handheld space is able to expand this time, when in the past, it didn't make nearly as much sense. By the way, on a recent episode of the Nerd Nest podcast, we talked a bunch about how indie games don't get enough attention. So in today's video, I wanna use B-roll from a bunch of different indie games with the titles of the games in the lower left of the screen. If you see something that you think looks cool, be sure to check it out on Steam, and if there's an indie game that you'd like me to feature in the future, let me know in the comments down below that like button. And while you're down there, do me a favor, click on subscribe, because if you haven't, I just just hit 75,000 subscribers, which is crazy, and I would be absolutely amazing if I could hit 100,000 next year. Ever since the Vita, which was a pretty popular system in hindsight, but at the time it didn't really do the numbers that Sony needed to justify continuing to invest in it, people have been asking Sony to make another handheld. And last year, Sony announced the PlayStation Portal. People got really excited right up until they realized that it was just a streaming device. I ordered one right away. Mine arrived broken. The return process for, for it was kind of a nightmare because I had ordered through PS Direct. And it, I was just too frustrated at the end of the day in order to bother with it after that. Still, I say for people who want to stream their PlayStation games from their PS5s to a device like this and have all of the bells and whistles that a DualSense controller has, the PS Portal is probably a pretty good bet. However, when Sony made this device, they made some baffling choices by not allowing it to stream games from Sony's servers, instead forcing people to play games from their PS5s instead. Sony has changed things as now you can stream games from their servers, but you do have to subscribe to the highest PS Plus tier, but that isn't the handheld that we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about a possible follow-up to the Vita or the PSP, whatever it is, something that can play games locally. And the games it's supposed to be able to play are PS5 games on the go. But this has got to be a really long way off, and it would have to be. Currently, the most powerful handheld on the market is probably the ROG Ally X. And if it's not the most powerful, it's at least the most powerful that I've ever used. The system caps out at about 35 watts, and if you're running it that hard, you cannot expect the battery to last very long. The PS5 uses 196 watts, depending on what game you're playing. Of course, that's running games at higher resolutions and higher frame rates, and maybe with ray tracing on, and depending on the game. I'm sure that a handheld from Sony would be, I don't know, 1080p at most, and that's perfectly fine for a small screen that you would have in a handheld. But still, PC games are made to run on lots of different types of hardware. They're optimized to run on lower end systems based in part on Steam's hardware survey. PS5 games are optimized to run on one set of hardware and suddenly playing those games on less powerful hardware means that the games would need some kind of updating, most likely. But down the road, as chips get more powerful, Sony might be able to drop a handheld PS5, one that plays games at lower resolutions, perhaps capped at 30 frames per second, and that might work, and it seems like it might be what Sony's doing. I found this over at Polygon. 
In the past few years, Valve has opened up a new market for more expensive, more powerful premium handheld gaming devices with the Steam Deck, which now has a number of competitors that also run PC games. This seems to have encouraged both Microsoft and Sony to reconsider the handheld market, long thought to have been locked down by Nintendo after Sony's attempts to challenge it with the PlayStation Portable and the PlayStation Vita ultimately fizzled out. But this time, things might be different. At nearly 150 million units sold, the Switch has shown that the world is perfectly happy with handheld devices. And on top of that, the power curve of gaming hardware has slowed down. We just don't see the massive jumps in graphical fidelity anymore. Games just look good these days, but I think the biggest innovation from Sony has got to be their new PSSR, which is Sony's upscaler, which allows them to make games that aren't updated for the PS5 look better on the PS5 Pro. Digital Foundry says that it is on par with other upscalers. So if Sony includes the PSSR chip in their new handheld, they could possibly run games all the way down to, I don't know, 540p or something like that, and then upscale them to 1080p, which is compelling if we can't tell the difference. And that is a real possibility using a seven or eight inch screen. And PlayStation fans still seem to be interested in the idea of a handheld from Sony. Recently, Push Square, which is a PlayStation focused blog, asked their readers if they were interested in a PlayStation Portable like the Steam Deck, and these were the results. 56% of those who voted in our poll were very much in favor, while a further 18% also responded positively. Meanwhile, only 15% told us they are not interested. Given the latest report and many previous rumors on the subject, it does seem like this is something in PlayStation's future, whether it comes alongside the PS6 or beforehand. Such a machine would not be devoid of potential setbacks. It likely would be pricey, bulky, and may not have a stellar battery life. However, as Steam Deck and other portable PCs have shown, enthusiasts are loving these things despite the negatives. And Sony is not the only hardware company enticed by what Nintendo and Valve have seen to pull off. Microsoft's Phil Spencer has been pretty vocal about wanting a handheld Xbox, but he always seems to say it like, there's nothing he can do about it, like he's waiting for somebody else to solve this problem for him. That said, he was recently interviewed by Bloomberg and he had this to say about the possibility of an Xbox handheld. The expectation is that we would do something, Spencer said, while also noting that the work on such project has yet to progress beyond market research and prototyping. Longer term, I love us building devices and I think our team could do some real innovative work, but we wanna be informed by learning about what is happening now. I think here he's saying, we're gonna go hands off for a while and let other people try things and fail. We'll, we will learn from their mistakes and then we will win later down the road. Kind of like how McDonald's put tons of effort into research as to where they should put their stores and then Burger King just rented places across the street. Let the others do the work and then copy them is essentially what Microsoft is doing here. But People have been waiting for a while and Phil keeps getting asked about an Xbox handheld. This isn't the first time he's talked about it either. He keeps mentioning it over and over. Back in February, he says he was a big fan of handhelds. He often has them on his shelf behind him when he makes his videos about what Xbox is up to. At GDC, he said, I want my Lenovo Legion Go to feel like an Xbox, Spencer told Polygon editor-in-chief uh, Chris Palante. I brought the Legion Go with me to GDC. I'm on the airplane and I have this list of everything that makes it not feel like an Xbox. Forget about the brand, more like, are all my games there? Do all of my games show up with the save files that I want? Again, Microsoft controls how Windows looks and behaves on handhelds they could easily make something that is more accessible using a controller, but they keep holding back for some reason. Some would say that Microsoft would have an easier time making this transition to handhelds than Sony would. They have the Xbox Series S after all, which uses way less power at full draw than the PS5 does. The Series S pulls in an average of about 77 watts during gameplay, but if they run games at lower resolution and use upscaling like I explained earlier, and by the way, Microsoft has their own upscaling that they've been working on, they could put the Series S into a handheld and they already have games optimized for lower spec hardware. But at this point, I think it's too late to have an Xbox handheld. There are lots of games that don't come to Xbox because Xbox is losing this generation and they're losing it badly. By putting out an Xbox handheld, they're making a system that has limited access to games. But 
I don't think that Microsoft shouldn't ship a handheld. I just don't think it should be an Xbox handheld. Microsoft has Windows. And I think now is the time for Microsoft to just embrace Windows as a gaming platform and make Windows more controller friendly. They've been taking baby steps with excruciatingly small changes that they've made to the Xbox app on Windows, but it isn't enough. Every time I use a Windows handheld or I use Windows from my couch, I have to interact with some stupid pop-up that I can't use a controller for. And this problem would be so easy for Microsoft to solve. They already have a really well-designed interface for using it with a controller on the Xbox. Just port that to Windows and have it automatically switch to that UI when a controller is used on Windows. It is a simple solution. And if Microsoft doesn't wanna take any of the risk, they don't have to. They can simply fix the software and instantly make handheld PCs that are already in the market today massively better. But if they do want to take the risk, then they should treat it the handheld PC like they do with their Microsoft Surface laptops. Most people are using other PCs, not Surface, but that doesn't stop Microsoft from putting out their own hardware and still taking advantage of other hardware on the market. Let me know what you think about these handhelds in the comments section down below or hit me up on social media. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.